narayanam namaskrityam naram chaiva narottamam daivim sarasatim vyasam tato jayamudirayat Nista Praeshu Vabhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtaki We're reading Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 1, Chapter 1 entitled Questions by the Sages, text number two. Dharma Prajita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Matra Vastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parishwaraha Sadyo Redaya Varudyate Trakriti Bihi Sushushibi Takshanat Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parishwaraha Sadhyoriraya Varujyate Takriti Bihi Tushushubhi Takshanat Dharma Projita Kaita Votra Paramo Nirmat Saranam Satam Vedyam Vastavam Matravastu Shivadam Tapatrayon Mulanam Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite Kimba Parishwaraha Sadyo Redaya Varudyate Takriti Bihi Sushushubis Takshanat
dharma, religiosity, projita, completely rejected, kaitava, covered by fruit of intention, atra, herein, parama, the highest, nirmatsaranam, of the 100% pure in heart, satam, devotees, vedyam, understandable, vastavam, factual, atri, herein, vastu, substance, shivadam, well-being, tapatraya, threefold miseries, unmulanam, causing uprooting of, Srimat, beautiful, Bhagavate, the Bhagavat Purana, Mahamuni, the great sage Vyasadev, Krite, having compiled, Kim, what is, Va, the need, Parai, others, Ishwaraha, the Supreme Lord, Sadhya, at once, Ridhi, within the heart, Avarudhyate, become manifest, Atra, herein, Ridhibi, he, the pious man, or by the pious men, Sushrushibi, by culture, Takshanat, without delay. Translation, completely rejecting all religious principles which are materially motivated, this Bhagavad Purana propounds the highest truth which is understandable by those devotees who are fully pure in heart. The highest truth is reality distinguished from illusion for the welfare of all. Such truth uproots the threefold miseries. This beautiful Bhagavatam compiled by the great sage Vyasadeva in his maturity is sufficient in itself for God-realization. What is the use of any other scripture? As soon as one attentively and submissively hears the message of Bhagavatam, by this culture of knowledge, the Supreme Lord is established within his heart. Yesterday we began the purport, so I'm going to go through from where we left off in the purport. Nothing is apart from the substance, but at the same time the energies are different from the substance. This conception is not contradictory. Srimad Bhagavatam explicitly promulgates the simultaneous one and different philosophy of the Vedanta Sutra, which begins with the Janmadasya Sutra. This knowledge that the energy of the Lord is simultaneously one with and different from the Lord is an answer to the mental speculator's attempt to establish the energy as the absolute. When this knowledge is factually understood, one sees the conception of monism and dualism to be imperfect. Development of this transcendental consciousness grounded in the conception of simultaneously one and different leads one immediately to the stage of freedom from the, the threefold miseries. The threefold miseries are one, those miseries which arise from the mind and body, two, those miseries inflicted by other living beings, and three, 
those miseries arising from material catastrophes over which one has no control. Srimad Bhagavatam begins with the surrender of the devotee unto the absolute person. The devotee is fully aware that he is one with the absolute and at the same time in the eternal position of servant to the absolute. In the material conception, in the material conception, one falsely thinks himself the Lord of all he surveys, and therefore he is he is always troubled by the threefold miseries of life. But as soon as the, but as soon as he comes to know his real position as transcendental servant, he at once becomes free from all miseries. As long as the living entity is trying to master material nature, there, there is no possibility of his becoming servant of the Supreme. Service to the Lord is rendered in pure consciousness of one's spiritual identity by, by service one is immediately freed from material encumbrances from material encumbrances Omagyana timiranda syakyanan jana shalakaya chakthurun militan yena tasmai shri gurave namaha vanchakaupa tarubhyas chakripa sindhu bhai vachapati tanam pavani bhyo vaishna vibhyo namo namaha jai shri krishna chaitanya prabhu nichananda shri advaita gadadha shri vasadi gaur bhaktavanda hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So we're reading from the second verse of the first chapter. The first three verses of the Srimad Bhagavatam are the prelude to the speaking of the Srimad Bhagavatam. It's not actually really begun yet. Just like in Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavad Gita, first chapter of Bhagavad Gita, we're setting the scene to the what's taking place in the battle. So similarly also in Srimad Bhagavatam, first canto, we don't have the appearance of Sukadeva Goswami until the end of the first canto. It's the end of the first canto when the Srimad Bhagavatam actually begins. But what we hear in the first canto is the prelude. And the first three verses are like an invocation to the whole Srimad Bhagavatam. It's customary when writing literature, transcendental literature, that they begin with the invocation. Just like in Chaitanya Charitamrita, you can see the invocation verses there in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. So similarly here in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasadev begins with invocation. The first verse was offering obeisances to the Supreme Lord. Now in the second verse, he's describing the glories of the Srimad Bhagavatam. How this Srimad Bhagavatam can actually awaken prema in the heart of the devotee simply by hearing this message of Srimad Bhagavatam. It's mentioned in this verse, one should be nirmatsaranam. In other words, without envy. But material world, who is without envy? We're all envious people. Of course, we envy Krishna more than everyone. We envy Krishna because Krishna has everything. So in material concept of life, we envy other people. But when we purify our consciousness, we can become free of envy. 
And Srimad Bhagavatam describes that even though we're not nirmatsaranam, we can become nirmatsaranam simply by hearing the message of Srimad Bhagavatam. Just as simply by chanting the holy name of Krishna, we can become purified. And similarly, by hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can also purify our heart. So we were hearing from Prabhupada's purport Prabhupada was describing, yesterday we described how the Vedic literature described different kinds of worship and it talks about worship of demigods and it also describes about worship of the impersonal absolute. So Srila Prabhupada describes now about how Lord Chaitanya has given the perfect philosophy that he has described the, the absolute truth as being both one and different from the living entities. Achintya bed abedatattva, inconceivably, simultaneously one and different. This is the position of the living entities in relation to the Lord. We're one with the Lord. We're individuals, we're spiritual entities, we are Brahman. But we're different from him. He's the master, we're the servants. This philosophy is given by Lord Chaitanya. This is the synthesis of the, uh, the teachings of the Vedas from the previous Acharyas. We know that Shankaracharya had defeated Buddhism and brought back the Vedic philosophy. But Shankaracharya established the Advaitavada, the philosophy of oneness. And he gave emphasis to this statement in the Vedas, Sarvam Kaovidam Brahma, that everything is Brahman, everything is spirit. But then after Shankaracharya, then the Vaishnava Acharyas came, Ramanuja Acharya and Madhvacharya, and these Vaishnava Acharyas, they preached very strongly against the Advaita Vada. And they preached that the Absolute is not just simply one, but there's dualism. And they, we see the different philosophies of the Vaishnava Acharyas. Uh, we have uh, Shuddha Dvaita, Vishishta Dvaita, Dvaita Dvaita, like that. This is the philosophy of the Vaishnava Acharyas. But it was Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who appeared. Ramanuja Acharya, he appeared 1,000 years ago. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came just a little over 500 years ago and he synthesized the philosophies. He brought the philosophies of the different sampradayas together by preaching this achintya ved abheda tattva. And this philosophy uh, establishes that the Lord is personal. And, but he, he, can, he also has this impersonal feature. It's not that he is only impersonal. And it's not that he is just only distinct from the impersonal. It's not that the impersonal is not there. The impersonal aspect is also there in the Lord. And so it's different features of the Supreme. As described in Srimad Bhagavatam in the second chapter, Vedanti tat tadvam vidam tadvam yajnamam avayam brahmeti paramatmeti bhagavan iti sabyate. Learned transcendentalists who know the absolute truth call this non-dual substance Brahman, Paramatma, Bhagavan. When Bhavan's journal, one uh, magazine published in New Delhi in 1970, they approached Srila Prabhupada with a number of questions. And one of the questions which they asked him, they said, which philosophy is right? Some people are Advaitavada and some people follow Advaitavada. So which one is actually correct? So Prabhupada said, they're both right. Let everybody chant Hare Krishna. This was Srila Prabhupada's reasoning. Turn everyone into devotees. Let them chant the holy name of the Lord. That's the important thing. You may speculate on philosophy for so long, but if we chant the holy name, then we can make tangible advancement. So it's very important 
for people to understand the real message of the scriptures, that it's not meant for just sense gratification. The, the Vedas are not there just simply for our sense gratification. That is called Kaitava Dharma. The Vedas are meant to elevate us to understand the real purpose behind the Vedas. And the purpose of all the Vedas ultimately is to know Krishna. And so one simply, if one simply engages in ritualistic ceremonies, are worshipping different demigods, different devas, are worshipping the impersonal Brahman. These are all classified as Kaitava Dharma. Religion, just pretentious religion, not actual genuine religion. But it's religion which is performed simply for our sense gratification that I want, I want, give me this, give me, give me liberation, give me, it's all material. So subtle and gross sense gratification. This is both, both philosophies are condemned. And Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching everybody the real goal behind all the Vedas to understand our position as the servant of the Lord. And of course, this is taught by all the Vaishnava Acharyas, Ramanuja, Madhva, Nimbarka, Vishnu Swami, they're all teaching that the Lord is the master, a living entity is the servant. Although there are some philosophical differences, but the principle is the same, that there's one Supreme Lord over everyone and all others are his servants. So Srila Prabhupada makes the point that without understanding our position as the servant, then there's no question of making any spiritual advancement. We have to engage in service. And to actually engage in pure service, then we can actually relate, connect to Krishna. So consciousness has to be purified. And by service itself, we can become purified. That service can begin also through the medium of hearing transcendental knowledge. When we hear from the scriptures, then our consciousness can be purified through spiritual sound vibration. But without pure consciousness, without being nirmatsaranam, then we will not be successful. So we have to come to that level. We have to come to that stage, purifying the consciousness. Therefore, everyone is encouraged to do some service. Through the medium of service, the service itself gradually becomes transcendental. That in the beginning, we may have some motive just like Dhruva Maharaj had motive, he wanted a kingdom, but he became purified. Similarly, Gajendra, he wanted to be saved from the crocodile, but he want, finally he understood what he really wanted was to get purified of that bodily consciousness. So there are many examples, the great sages in Naimisharanya, they were inquisitive. The purpose of all their inquiry is to understand their relationship with Krishna. So when, when one takes up devotional service, then the purpose of all of these things is achieved. We'll read more from the purport. Over and above this, Srimad Bhagavatam is a perennial commentation on the Vedanta Sutra by Sri Vyasadeva. It was written in the maturity of his spiritual life through the mercy of Narada. Sri Vyasadeva is the authorized incarnation of Narayan, the personality of Godhead. Therefore, there is no question as to his authority. He is the author of all other Vedic literature 
Yet he recommends the study of Srimad Bhagavatam above all others. In other Puranas, there are different methods set forth by which one can worship the demigods. But, on the ba but in the Bhagavatam, only the Supreme Lord is mentioned. The Supreme Lord is the total body and the demigods are the different parts of that body. Consequently, by worshipping the Supreme Lord, one does not need to worship the demigods. The Supreme Lord becomes fixed in the heart of the devotee immediately. Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has recommended the Srimad Bhagavatam as a spotless Purana and distinguishes it from all other Puranas. So, Srila Vyasa Dev is described here because we're hearing the glories of the Srimad Bhagavatam. We want to understand the Srimad Bhagavatam is so wonderful. Who's, who's responsible for it? Who wrote it? So we're hearing Srimad Bhagavate Mahamuni Krite, right? Mahamuni means Srila Vyasa Dev. He's the great sage, not just any great sage, but he himself is the incarnation of the personality of Godhead. Therefore, he is Narayana. He is also Narayan Mahamuni. And he has come to write literatures for people in the age of Kali. That was his particular service because it was understood Kali Yuga is coming and in the Kali Yuga, very dark time, very irreligious, very fallen people, no good memories. Previous Yuga, the Dwapara Yuga, Treta Yuga, Satya Yuga, people could hear, they could remember. But Kali Yuga people, very hopeless people, useless people, very poor memories. Chanchalahi mana Krishna, right? Mind is very chanchal. Won't stay in one place. We hear and we forget. We hear again, still forget. We have to, very, therefore everything had to be written down. And Srila Vyasa Dev, he took that responsibility. He had the Vedas written down. He also wrote himself Vedanta Sutra. Vedanta Sutra, Veda means the knowledge and Vedanta means the end of knowledge. But he made it in the Sutra because the Vedas are so vast, so he condensed it. He made the Vedanta Sutra. But, but because it's Sutra, very difficult to understand, very condensed, very thick. Nobody knows what the meaning is. That's the problem. Therefore, he wrote commentary on Vedanta Sutra. And this Srimad Bhagavatam was his actual commentary on Vedanta Sutra. Just as to understand Vedanta Sutra, you have to be Brahman, you have to be in the mode of goodness. So similarly, the Srimad Bhagavatam, you have to be Nirmatsaranam, you have to be pure, you have to come to the mode of goodness to understand it. Anybody can read it. And if, if you go on reading it, gradually you will come to the mode of goodness. Gradually you will become free of envy. If we keep reading. But you have to keep reading. So Srila Vyasadeva wrote many other books. He had written 18 Puranas, six for each of the modes of nature. Prabhupada mentions here how some of these Puranas describe that you should worship demigods, do these different different rituals and therefore after he had written all of these books Srila Vyasadeva did not feel any satisfaction and it was at that time his spiritual master Narada Muni appeared to him and told him the problem that you have not properly emphasized the importance of bhakti yoga and devotion to the Supreme Lord you have not emphasized the worship of the personality of Godhead over all others. Just like when you read Mahabharat, you read Mahabharat. So many people read Mahabharata. They never, can never understand Krishna as the supreme personality of Godhead there. Very difficult. 
because so many other things are there. So, after getting instruction from Narada Muni, then Srila Vyasa Dev compiled this Srimad Bhagavatam, described here, in his maturity. He compiled it in his maturity with full realization. And therefore, here in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we do not find glorification of any other process other than Bhakti Yoga. It's only the worship of the Supreme Lord. Nothing else is mentioned. There's no importance given to the worship of demigods, no importance given to Vedic Yagyas, no importance to austerities and tapasyas. The important thing is simply hear about Krishna, hear about the Lord and glorify the Lord by chanting His holy name and His glories. So this was the mature realization of Srila Vyasadeva. So he says, actually, there's no need of anything else. Huh? Kimva parer ishvaraha. Kimva parer. I mean, you don't need anything else. If you have Krishna, you have everything. If we have Srimad Bhagavatam, we have everything. If all the other books in the world are destroyed, there's no loss because everything is here in the Srimad Bhagavatam. Sahotra Maharaj, he used to give the example, he would tell, that he said, that just like when the, the Arabs came to Egypt, they came to Egypt, the Egyptians, they had a huge library of all of their ancient scriptures. And so the Arab leader came there, I forget the name of the Arab, but uh, anyway, powerful general, he came there and he saw their books, all their library, so many books, great wisdom and learning from the past, from the Egyptian culture. And he said, everything we need to know is in the Quran. We don't need any of these other books, burn them. And this way they set fire to the library of all the Egyptian scriptures. They burned the whole lot. Because he said everything's in our Quran, all of these other things, no, don't need them. So Bhaktivinoda Thakur, he said the same thing about Srimad Bhagavatam. He said everything is here in Srimad Bhagavatam. We don't need all, of, if, if we don't have any of these other books, won't be a big loss, no big problem. It's all here in Srimad Bhagavatam. Everything we need to know, hmm? which is important. So, Lord Chaitanya gave great importance to hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. We were hearing yesterday, Janani Vas Prabhu told how Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would have regular Bhagavatam class. Just as we are having Bhagavatam class, Lord Chaitanya Mahaprabhu would also have Bhagavatam class. This is the business of devotees relishing the topics of Krishna. Very important activity for us every day. Srila Prabhupada, Rupa Goswami included hearing Srimad Bhagavatam in his Panch Anga Bhakti, the five items of Bhakti Yoga that a little attachment for any one of them can give one great, can give one perfection. And Srila Prabhupada also included Srimad Bhagavatam in our morning program. Not that we just go and see the deity and ring the bell, but we go to the temple, we chant the holy name. And then after worshipping the Lord, chanting the holy name, then we sit together and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam and discuss the topics of Krishna. This is the business of devotees. This is what our life is meant for. We want to go back to Godhead. What do you think you'll do in the spiritual world? In the spiritual world, the devotees are relishing topics of Krishna constantly. So. If we don't have a taste for hearing here, 
then we'll never be qualified to go back to Godhead. We have to develop that eagerness to want to hear. So the Srimad Bhagavatam described here, Sushru Shro. Huh? Takriti bihi sushru shrubi takshanat. Sushru shrubi, culture, the culture of hearing. This is the, the culture that we want to hear. The Srimad Bhagavatam, the topics of Krishna. So we, we give great importance to this activity. Uh, takshanat without delay, immediately, right? A bit more of the purport, I'll just finish it. The proper method for receiving this transcendental message is to hear it submissively. A challenging attitude cannot help one realize the transcendental message. One particular word is used herein for proper guidance. The word is sushrushu. One must be anxious to hear this transcendental message. The desire to hear is the first qualification. Less fortunate persons are not at all interested in hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam. The process is simple, but the application is difficult. Unfortunate people find enough time to hear idle social and political conversations. But when invited to attend a meeting of devotees to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, they suddenly become reluctant. Sometimes professional readers of the Bhagavatam immediately plunge into the confidential topics of the pastimes of the Supreme Lord which they seemingly interpret as sex literature. Srimad Bhagavatam is meant to be heard from the beginning. Those who are fit to assimilate this work are mentioned in this sloka. One becomes qualified to hear Srimad Bhagavatam after many pious deeds. The intelligent person with thoughtful discrimination can be assured by the great sage Vyasadeva that he can realize the Supreme Personality directly by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Without undergoing the different stages of realization set forth in the Vedas, one can be lifted immediately to the position of Paramahamsa simply by agreeing to receive this message. So Srila Prabhupada is making the important points here simply by hearing. Hearing is the first qualification, that desire, that eagerness to hear is the qualification for making progress in spiritual life. Just like when Srila Prabhupada took initiation from his spiritual master, Srila Bhaktisiddhanta Sarasati said, oh yes, I have noted him. He likes to hear. Very important qualification. That the eagerness to hear. If we keep that enthusiasm to be eager to hear, then we will never leave Krishna consciousness. Because it's only within the Krishna consciousness movement that we get this opportunity to hear so much again and again, so much. Particularly at this time with the lockdown, people are saying so many classes, so many speakers, all giving lectures, zooming all over the planet, right? Classes are going on all the time. So many invitations come. People, because devotees want to hear. This is the time, nothing else to do. Prabhu, come, give class. <laughs> nothing to do. Other times, so busy. You know? But now, people have nothing they want to hear. It's very good. And 
Prabhupada says, you don't have to go through all the different processes mentioned in the Vedas. You don't have to like practice brahmacharya and do austerities and then you don't have to perform ritualistic fire yagya. You don't have to do all of these different things. You just simply have to hear. Just simply by hearing this Srimad Bhagavatam. But we have to hear with quality. There's quality in everything. If the hearing is done in the wrong manner, we will not get the, re the result. The so Prabhupada talks similarly in Bhagavad Gita, chapter 4, verse 34. Tadvidi pranipatena pariprasnina sivaya. Just try to learn the truth by approaching a spiritual master. Inquire from him submissively. And then Prabhupada in the purport, he talks about how a challenging mood or absurd inquiries will not help one. If people come with a challenging mood that, you know, I know everything, you can't tell me anything, then there's no very, then it's very difficult to try to teach them. Or abs absurd inquiries, you know, people, sometimes people would come when Prabhupada would lecture and he would ask so many s stupid things like, Oh Swamiji, why you have a ring on your finger? Oh, Swamiji, why you sit on a big seat? You know, stupid things like this. They can, they're not really ready to hear. So the, the mood has to be right. We have to hear submissively, not in the challenging manner. But, and the inquiries must be in relation to Krishna and those things, topics in relation to Krishna. The inquiries cannot be, oh, Swamiji, give me a lucky number so I can win the lottery. <laughs> you know, these kind of foolish things. So, we have to understand how to properly hear. We, we hear the hearing submissive should go to the heart, not just in one ear, out the other. The hearing must be done carefully that we can retain what is heard. So we have to give proper attention. That is the challenge. Prabhupada said, the process is easy. The application is difficult. <laughs> right? That's like chanting Hare Krishna. Very easy process. But who can do it? Who are the people who are re willing to regularly chant minimum number of rounds every day? The, you know, the application is a, difficult, but the process is very easy. So similarly, Srimad Bhagavatam, hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to hear it from the beginning. So, we're beginning again the Srimad Bhagavatam. How many times did you go through the Bhagavatam? Hmm. Anyway, we didn't complete the Bhagavatam, but we completed as far as Srila Prabhupada's purports were, up to the, uh, the stealing of the cows by Lord Brahma. And after that, then Srila Prabhupada's past, Prabhupada left the body, so his no more purports. So it was decided it would be helpful for the devotees to go back to the beginning and hear the Srimad Bhagavatam from the beginning. And so it's an opportunity for all of us to revise and to refresh our memories and to understand deeper, more to go into the subject matter of Srimad Bhagavatam more deeper. Because there's no redundancy in hearing again the same topic. But rather, the more we hear them, the more we awaken understanding and the deeper our realization becomes. So it's important for us to hear carefully and try to inquire, make inquiries or bring up subject matters for discussion. Okay, so any questions, comments?
Yes, Prabhu. We understand that the Bhagavatam is the highest of all scriptures. So what should be our attitude to other scriptures such as the Mahabharata? Well, there's no harm. You like to read books, you have time, you can also read Mahabharata. But Jiva Goswami did say that nobody developed love of God by reading the Mahabharata. But you like to understand more of the events associated with the appearance of Lord Krishna and the different personalities on the planet at that time and hear more about the great sages and the Vedic culture, then certainly reading, Srimad, uh, the, reading the Mahabharata can be very helpful. It can give us a lot of background information to things which are not described in detail in the Srimad Bhagavatam, we can get more deeper background information from the Mahabharata. So this way it can be very helpful for us. And Srila Prabhupada, actually at one point Srila Prabhupada said, he said, after I finish translating Srimad Bhagavatam, I'm going to translate a Mahabharata. He was even thinking of doing and. Uh, Ridayananda Goswami Maharaj also began translating Mahabharata at one point. It was never published, but he did work on it for some time. And it was published, some articles were published in the Back to Godhead magazine. So Prabhu is questioning that everyone is on different levels of consciousness. So by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, are we going to purify our consciousness? We're going to come to higher levels of consciousness. Just like here in Srimad Bhagavatam, it was mentioned that we should be Nirmatsaranam. So somebody questioned yesterday, you know, I'm not Nirmatsaranam. So maybe I, I'm not qualified to hear Srimad Bhagavatam. But it's pointed out that by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we will become Nirmatsaranam. And those who are Nirmatsaranam, they also need to hear Srimad Bhagavatam and they can go on to develop Krishna Prem. That the goal of hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam is that you will develop love of God. As Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Prem Panarto Mahan. The goal of life is to develop love of God. So how to develop that love of God? You develop it through the medium of hearing. By, simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, we can come to that stage of Krishna Prem. Those who are on the lower level of consciousness, you know, I still have so many anarthas in my heart. I have so much contamination there in the heart. We can purify the heart through hearing Srimad Bhagavatam. Just by being present, taking part, going through the Srimad Bhagavatam verse by verse, understanding the teaching, we will also be relieved of so much 
contamination. Because hearing the Srimad Bhagavatam, Srimadam Swakita Krishna Punya Shravana Kirtana Ridhyanta Stohiya Badrani Vidunoti Suratsatam. That simply by hearing Srimad Bhagavatam, that is in itself a pious activity. And by that hearing process, the heart will become purified and we can awaken Krishna consciousness. Yes, Prabhu? Yeah, Jiva Goswami said that you don't, you cannot, nobody ever developed Krishna praying by reading Mahabharata. Everything is po Prabhupada said everything is possible by the mercy. Huh? <laughs> no, Prabhu is saying uh, Prabhupada said everything is possible, but Jiva Goswami said Jiva Goswami didn't say impossible, he said nobody has ever developed love of God by reading by Mahabharat. He said, nobody yet, he never said impossible, but he said, so far, nobody has developed love of God. Maybe possible, but we didn't find anybody who did it yet. Right? A difference. Okay. Yes, Prabhu? How, how to hear attentively? Well, we have to absorb the mind in the hearing. The mind should be focused on the subject matter, what is being taught. It's, the hearing is done with the, with the ears and the, the mind should be fixed there, right? Don't listen to the mind. The, the mind could be some other place. You may be sitting, hearing in, in the classroom where the, where the Bhagavatam is being spoken, but in your mind you're thinking, what's for breakfast? What am I going to have for prasadam today? We're thinking, or what am I going to do after this is over? You know, you're not thinking about what's actually being taught. Your mind is not on the present. Your mind be, may be on the future. Your mind may be on the past. So, you have to be in the present. That's important. You want to be that this moment now that we're hearing, we've come to hear Srimad Bhagavatam, we have to put the attention on the hearing of the Srimad Bhagavatam. Don't be thinking what happened yesterday, what happened before, what who, what, oh, Mongol Arti, oh, that, uh, that person led Mongol Arti, oh, I didn't like his kirtan. You know, don't think about these things. You know, just think, now we're here in Srimad Bhagavatam. We want to focus. What is the verse? What is being discussed? What is the topic? That is how we hear. We have to really make some effort to fix the mind, to hear. Now if you go out of class and somebody says to you, what was class about? Oh, I don't know. Then it's not very good. What was the good of you being in the class? So, we have to be here mentally, not just bodily. All right? Hare Krishna. Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Srila Prabhupada ki, Gopra Manande.